the question is, don't I need my anger and judgment to avoid becoming a doormat? And the question we have to ask ourselves is, can we know someone has stolen something and that we need to, you know, maybe check on our wallet when they're around without labeling them a thief, without condemning them as a human being? Can we recognize that judging others harshly, including judging our own judgment as negative, can we instead tap into a higher wisdom that informs us of the past, informs our actions in this moment, yet recognize that judging others hurts ourselves, that it creates negativity within us and disturbs our own inner peace. We all know what happens when we get angry. We can't even think straight. We can't think of the words that would convey our point in the most articulate, clear, kind way. And we turn into gorillas, sometimes literally just making sounds at someone. We are literally that unable to communicate calmly, clearly, and effectively. And we know that when we can regain our composure, speak clearly, decisively, even forcefully, but with a clarity and calmness, we can use our highest wisdom, our greatest intelligence, and we can actually affect the world around us to create the change we want to see instead of sabotaging the change we want to see by losing our temper. There is nothing passive about meditation, spirituality, kindness, or compassion. In fact, Spirituality is about creating power and energy behind kindness, compassion, and love. And that means understanding what is truly best for ourselves and our loved ones. We would not want to let a drug addict know where we keep our jewelry but we can still love them and support them in a way that doesn't put ourselves at risk or danger and as we embark on this journey of universal love non-judgment we must also love ourselves and not judge ourselves harshly. Be patient and kind with ourselves and with others as we wish others would be towards ourselves. Nobody is perfect and all we can do is set our intentions and work to the best of our ability to live in alignment with those intentions. There is nothing weak about kindness or non-judgment. There is nothing naive about loving everyone on this planet. In fact, we know from close inspection that it is the only way to transform this world, to protect the ones we love and to help everyone reach their full potential. It doesn't mean giving all your money to the first homeless person you see, because then you are now homeless. 
and you can no longer help anybody in that position. So we have to find a way to stay centered, to love in a way that doesn't drain us of our own energy, but instead magnifies our energy through feeling light and joyful with no hate, resentment, or grudges in our heart. Sometimes people ask me what I would say to Ukrainians who are in harm's way or prisoners being tortured. And I would tell them simply, do whatever it takes to get through this. And that we're thinking of you and you're not alone. And if I can reach somebody before they are in that position, or if they are in that position in a way that they are open to learning about, tapping into that infinite reservoir of strength and peace and love and forgiveness within, then I will be there to help teach them. As so many prisoners and victims of war have discovered through their pain and suffering, religion and spirituality, because it is at these times when we need it the most and when it can be a lifesaver for so many people. As so many religious prisoners throughout history have shown us with their example of love and forgiveness and how that love and forgiveness transcended their pain and suffering. And we all have that ability. And I hope we live in a world with so much love, so much compassion, that we'll no longer need to learn these things because they will be innate within us, universally taught and universally practiced.